marks. We've got to wait for ours for a while, <laughs> so we're going to stay in the Kiss and Cry area and send it downtown to our colleague Tracy Wilson. There's another competition taking place in Hamar, where it's 20 below outside, much too cold for ice skating, but the perfect temperature for ice sculpture. This is an international event where contestants have 48 hours in order to complete their work of art. Many of the sculptures will be working round the clock tonight in order to be ready for tomorrow's judging. Personally, I think that's an awfully cold and lonely way to spend your Valentine's Day. So let's warm up with a love story. What's wrong? You haven't been yourself for a while now. You're preoccupied, you're distant. I felt there's something missing in our marriage. So have I. Is it me? Is it something I've done? No, it's not you. I've met someone else and I realize I don't love you anymore. I'm sorry, Rob, but I'm leaving you. Well, that's the type of daytime drama that millions of dedicated fans across the country tune into each and every day. Stories of newfound love and broken hearts. Of course, this one's occurring in Hollywood. Happens every day here, but they happen in the real world as well. Just such a story occurred in Albertville, France, in the Winter Olympics in 1992. It had lost love, broken relationships, hurt feelings, all the elements that make up a good soap opera. It's something we like to call as the skate world turns. Our story begins at the last Winter Olympic Games with a pair of American figure skaters, Jennifer Mino and Scott Wendland, and another pair, Natasha Kuchiki and Todd Sand, who had the national champions in 1991. Todd and Jennifer fell in love and one month later dumped their skating partners to become an item on the ice as well as off. Scott and Natasha were history, ah love, sometimes as cold as ice. We just had to make a decision that was best for, for us and it was hard to tell them but we told them individually and uh, it was a it was a really hard thing. I mean, it was a difficult decision to make because we were breaking up two pair teams, and then there would be one. Scott claims he has put the breakup behind him. He now coaches at the same rink Todd and his Jenny train in. Oh, do we say he had been Todd's best friend? I was very confused and upset. Um, I really didn't understand it. I wouldn't talk with them. They they really didn't talk to me, um, and there were hard feelings between the two of us. Natasha, still only 17, has a new partner. She has forgiven her old partner, Todd, and her old friend, Jennifer, but it took a while. For like a year and a half, we just didn't talk to each other, and every time we saw each other, we kind of like just gave each other evil eye and stuff like that. Meantime, the young lovers are, well, young lovers, spending much of their time off the ice with one another, enjoying the blossoming relationship. Todd, who is 30, says that his 23-year-old love has given his career a new spark. It's never stopped from the first day that we decided to skate together. And it's, it's just been great, and I, and I love, love what I'm doing and who I'm doing it with. When we're skating a slow, romantic piece, we can show the feelings that we really feel towards each other, and it makes it very easy to have that look when we're skating. And so the skate world turns. Two pairs teams have split to become one pairs team, but that team is skating into a romantic sunrise and a future much brighter than the past. And isn't that what a soap opera is all about? Jenny and Todd made their first Olympic appearance together last night, and they skated very well. They're currently in sixth place, and we'll see them tomorrow night when the first figure skating gold medal is awarded.